China has been an enigma throughout the COVID pandemic. The virus started in the country and has remained in the public eye for far longer than anywhere else in the world. In America, Europe and the rest of the globe, no one really cares about COVID anymore and people are just living their lives. But in China, that hasn't been the case as still to this day, millions of people sit in what can only be described as prison cells punished for the heinous crime of being near someone who tested positive. Civil unrest in China has erupted over the last few weeks as the people finally told the Communist Party that enough is enough and on the surface, this actually seemed to work. Over recent days, the CCP have been indicating that their zero COVID policy might be about to end, that this barbaric process is finally on its way out and that all will return to normal. But of course, there is more than meets the eye here and despite the lack of pushback from the legacy media, these claims have created questions that need to be asked and that's what this video will do. But first, what exactly has been happening in China that led to all this? Well, the lockdowns that left the West in 2021 never stopped occurring in China. In February of 2022, the entire city of Shanghai was shut down for a quarantine that encapsulated over 30 million people and lasted for six entire months. In September, 21 million were locked down in Tianjin, one of the largest port cities in the world, wrecking havoc for supply lines all over the place. And in October, just a few months ago, a region of Wuhan was locked down as it became illegal to even be seen outside for any reason. It's safe to say that China has taken fighting COVID to a whole other level, but this has not been popular at all and for good reason. This has been done in a notoriously brutal way, with some people literally starving to death in their cells as they are not fed and medical treatment being withheld from others. Over November then, protests started to emerge across China, opposing not only the lockdowns and the COVID policies, but the Communist Party as a whole, and they quickly picked up steam. There were demonstrations in every city you can imagine, and clashes between protesters, police, and COVID marshals became commonplace. They continued to escalate even to the point of legally permitted Western journalists being arrested at these protests under the guise of protecting them from the possibility of catching COVID from the crowd, which came straight from the mouthpiece of the Communist Party. Things were spiraling out of control and Xi Jinping's grasp on the country was being questioned for the first time in years. A march even made its way towards Tiananmen Square, the site of that infamous event three decades ago that YouTube might demonetize me for even mentioning. Legitimate queries about armed uprisings and coups were starting to be asked. The CCP did what they could to quell these demonstrations. They censored posts on WeChat and banned certain phrases or even cartoon characters from being seen. The Communist Party even censored crowds of the Football World Cup games as they didn't want Chinese citizens to see so many people next to one another without any COVID restrictions at all. But it seems that China's censorship systems were overwhelmed by the sheer volume of dissent online as it was taking them sometimes days to remove critical posts when in the past they would usually be removed within minutes. Some have said this is because much of this censorship is done manually, but the truth is we aren't actually sure why we've seen so much content critical to the Communist Party on China's internet over recent weeks. What is abundantly clear though is that the CCP had to act and so they did. On the 30th of November, Premier Sun Chun Lan spoke and seemed to relax her previously hardline stance surrounding lockdowns, which was a major development as she is the top official in charge of the fight against COVID. She said that the Omicron variant is becoming less pathogenic, that more people are getting vaccinated, and the state's measures are getting more efficient, so they're entering a new stage of the fight against COVID with new tasks. This was a little bit cryptic, but that didn't stop Western and Chinese media from jumping on the remarks and betting that she was setting the stage to wind back zero COVID policies, move the country back to some sense of normalcy. This was then followed by an article being posted in the Communist Party-owned Global Times stating that the Omicron variant is much less deadly, so people need not be worried about it. A slightly strange time to be announcing this as Omicron emerged and spread back in 2021 and it's now almost 2023. Then, on the 1st of December, a leaked report from a European Union official who had just met with Xi Jinping claimed that the Chinese president had acknowledged the frustration of the zero Covid policies and he had hinted that they might be relaxed shortly. 
Finally, on the 7th of December, China officially announced that it was lifting its most severe COVID policies, including forcing people into quarantine camps and that people can now isolate at home if they have mild or no symptoms. They are also reportedly relaxing rules requiring citizens to show negative tests before traveling or attending any kind of event, and some are even expecting China's borders to open up soon as well. This is apparently a massive change in policy and almost comes out of nowhere, with many even in China wondering why everything has changed so suddenly. The most obvious explanation is that the CCP decided it was not feasible to quell all this unrest and the only course of action was to give the people what they wanted and open the country back up. The legacy media has thrown caution to the wind and removed any skepticism they may have had and just trusted that this time the Communist Party is telling the truth. But many of them are also pushing the idea that China actually shouldn't be removing its zero COVID policy, amplifying voices claiming that this relaxation of policy will lead to thousands of Chinese dead. That's a strange stance that comes from the exact same publications that just a few weeks prior were calling the lockdowns a fiasco. From a financial point of view though, investors seem to be much more skeptical and a consensus has not yet been made at the time of my speaking. The Golden Dragon Index, which is a group of Chinese companies listed on American exchanges, saw a massive 5% jump in its value from the 7th of December to the 8th when this news was announced, and that's following an already strong week where prices rose by another 54% following the comments she made about sympathy for protesters. But investors in China are not so optimistic with the Chinese Shanghai Composite Index not really changing at all since this news was announced. Perhaps Chinese investors have a better memory when it comes to the Communist Party and their promises, as this wouldn't be the first time American investors get caught up in bullishness, throwing all caution to the wind as they so often do every month when they hope and pray that a Federal Reserve pivot will finally come. The question on all of our minds then is what will we see next? What will really happen in China and is the age of COVID lockdowns finally over? Well, the first thing to make clear is that only one man knows for sure what will happen next and that is Xi Jinping because he has absolute control and authority over the entirety of China. Whatever he wants to happen will happen and that much is clear, but the apparent shift he's made has been quick and doesn't really align with anything he's done in the past. You see, these COVID lockdowns were never actually about COVID, they were about control and authority and ensuring that the Chinese population never got used to the idea of freedom. For the last three years, every person in China has periodically gotten locked down to a point where it has almost just become normal and expected. This is power over the populace that most governments can only dream of and it cements the CCP as the single authority in the country that can never truly be opposed. When your citizens are routinely locked into their homes for months on end, are they really ever going to revolt and try and replace their leaders? Is a civil war or serious unrest ever really going to rise, displacing the communists? The bet made by the CCP has been no, that these COVID lockdowns are the equivalent of keeping a boot pressed down on the heads of all Chinese. The problem is, over the last month, these protests got unnecessarily brutal and punitive, even leading to some very high-profile deaths that everyone knows are the fault of the CCP, and so the people started to speak up and push back. But the fundamental question that we need to ask is, has Xi Jinping changed his overarching goal? Does he no longer want to be a dictator? Does he no longer want absolute authority? Sadly, the only possible answer to these questions is no. Xi is the same man today that he was a month ago and that doesn't bode well for the future of lockdowns in China. They are a tool for the Communist Party to use and a government, especially an authoritarian one, will never give up a tool like that. The lockdowns will be back, whether or not under the guise of COVID, I cannot say, but the foundations have already been laid for climate lockdowns or social credit lockdowns or energy preservation lockdowns and the results will be much the same. I do doubt that the CCP will resort to literally welding apartment blocks shut again in order to keep people inside and I do doubt that the CCP will allow their logistics to get so bad that people will starve to death under lockdowns again but I don't doubt at all that within a few months it will be like nothing has changed. This is just the emperor and his new clothes, something that everyone knows is a falsehood but it's allowed to flourish as no one has the gall to oppose it, least of all our legacy media outlets who are terrified of losing their valuable press passes in China. These lockdowns aren't going to stop because nor will the Communist Party's lust for power. 
those camps that have been built over recent years aren't being torn down. The COVID marshals who have doubled as riot police haven't been laid off, and the QR code flashing red is still haunting the dreams of many innocent Chinese. The reality is that authoritarian governments can do what they like, including simply lie about what they're doing, and with the Great Firewall, the average citizen in China only knows what he sees with his own eyes, and whether or not millions of people are locked away in isolation is something they just have to trust the government on. What is surprising and actually borderline criminal is how the legacy media in the West have been helping the CCP with damage control by publicizing China's shift and helping to explain how everything will change. This is despite the fact that throughout 2021 and 2022, the CCP had said multiple times that they are finally going to stop their incredibly restrictive COVID policies and allow people to thrive only to lock them all down again when they felt like it. Many investors are also hearing this news and thinking this is the perfect time to invest in China, certain that this time they will finally get it right and stop bleeding money. But those people who trust the words of a genocidal regime that has nothing to lose by lying will continue to be shocked when the CCP does the unexpected and once again locks millions of people down. Unfortunately, I've been unable to show you some of the footage regarding these riots and events in China for this video, as YouTube will not allow it on their platform without penalizing those who post it. So if you want to help get the word out and support this content, then subscribe, like, comment, and share this video with other people. And until next time, stay stoic.